When I look at the back of this phone, do you know what I see? I see a retro, futuristic design that takes inspiration from the machine age, factories, electronics, and outer space. And it showcases the extreme contrast between the past and the future, evoking the sense of the collision of time. So this is the IQ Neo 6, a brand new mid-range challenger. And when it comes to the back of this device, it does look awesome. I can't take credit for that explanation of the color though. That was all IQ. In my personal opinion, it's a really nice two-tone gradient with a soft matte finish. And I think it looks pretty spectacular, I have to say. And it appears to be unusually resistant to fingerprints. And you've got to love that. And although it does feel and look like glass, it is in fact a polycarbonate. And this color is called the Dark Nova. And that is a really good name. And do you know what else I like about this phone? The camera module. This kind of black glass on top of a clear glass layer really helps to emphasize the color of the phone. And it is pretty awesome, you've got to agree. And it kind of resembles one of my favorite phones right now in style and that is the Vivo X80 Pro. It's just got this really nice premium look to it. And since we're talking about the cameras, let's run through the hardware real quick. So it's a triple camera set up with a 64 megapixel GW1P Samsung ISOCELL as the primary. We've got optical image stabilization and electric image stabilization on here. That main primary lens is a 25 millimeter focal length equivalent. And check out the detail here on this burger. I don't know why I always take pictures of food because whenever I watch my videos back, I always get hungry. Anyway, we also have an eight megapixel ultra wide 60 millimeter focal length equivalent with around 116 degrees field of view. And finally, we do have a super macro lens and a two megapixel sensor behind it. And so far, I have to say, I'm really impressed with the results, but the best way to find out how this really stacks up in that mid-range tier is to test it against another phone in the same price bracket. Let me know what phone you think would be a good challenge for this phone. One thing I will say about this camera system that I noticed straight away is just like we see on the Vivo phones, the stabilization for video is pretty crazy. And the amount of features that we have for video recording and even camera filters and all this kind of stuff is quite vast. So you're not gonna be disappointed with the cameras on here, that's for sure. Now, if we flip around to the front of the display, we have a punch hole cutout for the selfie camera and that is a 16 megapixel selfie camera. Again, and there's a bunch of camera features and things you can do. One of the features that I really like is the pop art style. It just looks so awesome. The only problem is you can't change the text on that for some reason. It has to say pop comic. It can't say anything else. I would have loved to have put what gear there. That would have been so cool. I might have even have set it as my profile picture for a little while. And again, it's hard to tell you how good that selfie camera is, but I can tell you this, it does a good job at making me look good. And that's really what you want from a selfie camera. So it's a definite thumbs up from me. And before we get onto the displays, you'll be happy to know there are stereo speakers built in. There is an IR blaster, which means you can mess around with TVs, air conditioning units, using your phone instead of the actual remotes, but there is no headphone jack. However, there is a USB-C to a 3.5 mil headphone jack adapter in the box and the iQ Neo 6 has high res certification via a wire and wirelessly. And that sounds good to me. Okay, let's get on to what could arguably be the most important piece of hardware on a phone. It is the display. The best in the business right now when it comes to smartphone displays is Samsung display. And you'll see them on pretty much all of the flagship devices right now. And that's exactly what we got here, Samsung display. It is an E4 version though, so the E5 is the top tier. The E4 is a step down, but still pretty epic when it comes to specs. So we're talking about 120 hertz refresh rate, 360 hertz touch sampling, 1300 nits of peak brightness, 398 pixels per inch. Yes, we do have a little bit of a bezel all the way around and a little bit of a thicker chin at the bottom, but that's not unusual to see in the mid tier. And it's not quite as aggressive as some other phones I've seen in this price category. The screen itself does support HDR 10 plus and it's got a certificate to prove it, which means you're gonna get really, really good contrast, very deep blacks because it is a super AMOLED, very vivid and bright and really great color depth 
as well. You do have local tone mapping to assist with this and IQ do care about your eyes as well. They don't just want to burn your eyeballs out with immense brightness and contrast. So they have gone and got an SGS certificate for eye care. They've managed to reduce the blue light down to as low as 6.5%. I'm assuming that's when it's in the eye protection mode, but it's good to know they've gone to that extra effort to make sure that features in there. So that's most of the visual hardware you need to know about, but what's inside is what really counts. And of course, I'm talking about the system on chip. In this European model, we have the Snapdragon 875 g with a 3.2 gigahertz clock speed. And this chip is actually more powerful than the 2020 flagship from Qualcomm, around 10% more efficient and 10% more powerful overall. But you're getting that at a mid-tier price. Now combine that with eight or 12 gigabytes of RAM, depending on the option you go for, and UFS 3.1 storage, you have an amazingly fast and efficient bit of hardware in your hands. And there is virtual RAM expansion available on the device, as well as Defrag 2.0 tech, which reduces installation times on larger game files. For example, let's say PUBG or Apex Legends, which have massive download files. It can actually install those much quicker for you using this new tech. And when it comes to gaming, that high refresh rate on the display is really gonna help. And also that rapid 360 Hertz input response is going to make a difference. And IQ have also upgraded the haptics motor compared to their previous one. It's actually 20% more powerful, but actually doing so whilst remaining more quiet. And if you wanna win more games, you know what you gotta do, right? You gotta stay cool under pressure. And I heard the IQ Neo 6 can help you do this because it has one of the industry leading cascade cooling systems on board with five layers of graphite cooling plates in there. It can make sure you and it can sustain peak performance for long periods of time whilst gaming. And of course, other things like doing work or less important stuff like that. And so far, this all sounds pretty good, right? Well, it's important to know smartphones don't run on water. You need power and speed, speed and power. Well, IQ have got you covered in this area as well because it has a 4,700 milliamp cell split down the middle into two parts, allowing it to charge incredibly fast while staying safe. And there is an 80 watt fast charger in the box. How about that? And it can go from zero to 50% in just 12 minutes. Now that is fast. And the last couple of things you need to know about out of the box, it will be running Android 12. I'm told it will support up to three years of security updates. And there is Vivo's own skin on top and they call it Fun Touch OS, which brings a bunch of customizable tweaks, stuff like that to the software, but it's pretty close to stock and there isn't too much bloatware on there as well. So that's a definite win in my opinion but going back to the back and iq's explanation of it that's truly epic